Hey guys, this is Matt. I'm going to show you a little bit of a tutorial today. Uh, what I'm working on is the final stage of the Nurgle Winter City project. Um, what I'm going to show you how to do is how to do quality snow, at least the way I do it, on a large scale um, on a large scale project like this, but without having to pay out the nose for a lot of fancy snow effects. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get baking soda. Um, this is just some baking soda that we had uh, left over. I also picked up uh, two other boxes right here of baking soda, just in case, uh, that I ran out. Which I'm actually looking like I'm not going to run out. This is actually doing the trick pretty, pretty good all on its own. Uh, I'm already well through the smaller uh, sections. Though I have a feeling when I get to these bigger ones I'm going to start using a lot more so I have a feeling I'm going to kill that whole can. Uh, second thing you need is uh, just PVA glue. Uh, Elmer's glue works. I like to get it in these big bulk um, industrial sized ones because it's cheaper and you can just refill the, uh, the smaller ones if you want individual like little squirt bottles of them. Then I like to have some old nasty brushes that aren't really good for painting anymore and uh, some water to go with it. Now, uh, I have two little palettes set up here. One is the mix and one is just some watered down PVA glue. Now there's a reason why we have both of those. And you also, you know, if, if you're like me, you want to have a little snack on hand, you know, just, just to break up the, uh, the time a little bit. But uh, the, the last thing you're going to need is some high quality uh, snow flock, which I have Woodland Scenics right here. Um, now, the method for this is that we're gonna use the baking soda as a bulking agent mixed with the glue, and then we're going to sprinkle on the good stuff once it's all bulked up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you where I'm going back and detailing some of these pieces, because I experimented a little bit with an alternate way of doing this that didn't work out so well, so I'm going back and doing some fixes on these where they, I tried to just do straight glue and the snow and it didn't work out very well. So what you wanna do is when you mix this stuff, you wanna mix it about, I'd say about 60-40, 60 being the glue and 40 being the, uh, the baking soda, baking powder, whatever you have local that is used for it. Then you wanna do add a little bit of water to this stuff because it's going to get really clumpy really fast and the water helps to just kind of make it all flow. You don't want to add too much water or it gets really bubbly and then when it dries you're going to have all sorts of holes in your snow and you don't want that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking huge chunks of this stuff which it's actually starting to dry a bit. Uh, when you make a large batch like this that happens and what you could do is you could just get your brush a little wet and it'll help smooth it out a bit. This won't affect it in the long run, uh, in my opinion, though we will have to wait and see if that happens. Uh, I don't think it will from what, because I've done that already on several pieces and I've not noticed any, any drastic difference between them. So we want to just uh, bulk up the areas that we want to get bulked up. We want to make sure that we are noting where these spots are because the baking soda alone is not going to have a very realistic effect. Oh, there it goes, getting on my pants. All of my jeans at this point have become um, really worn down. I so need to purchase better clothes for when I actually decide to start going out and being a social person. But um, we're just going to keep doing this. And it's a good idea to not do it everywhere. Like, you know, snow drifts are not linear. So you don't want every single spot to be the same height. So I'm kind of bulking up this side a little bit more than the other side. That's one reason I'm doing this. Like this side I'm gonna leave alone completely. Then you wanna go over here and you can see I've got like a little catcher tray set up so that anything that spills over will just fall down there and I can recycle it. You just wanna sprinkle a little bit of your good flocking material over top of the the wet glue baking soda mix. Now here's the key thing, do not tap it off. You don't want to tap it off. You want to put a little more on there than you actually want to stay and then just leave it. You want to leave it there until it's dried and then you want to tap it off. So now we're going to do the same thing like on, uh, on these areas here. So we're going to go through and do that. 
So I'm going to put some up here. Just kind of put them up there for a second. I'm going to get my brush wet, like I said before. And this just really helps smooth it out, mostly. That's the big thing it does. Because otherwise they just look like big clumps of white, uh, white stuff. Otherwise, and those don't look appealing. So I'm just helping smooth them out a little bit. The water will dilute the glue a little, but as long as you don't, you don't want to like get huge amounts of water, you know, just dipping your brush in and then going to town on it, you know, painting, essentially painting it where you want it to be is going to be good enough. And as long as you make sure that you've got these clumps so that they're raised, when you place this stuff on top of it, that is going to help bulk it up and it's going to help raise it. So on the inside it'll be you know baking soda and you know the baking soda does yellow after a time but as long as you put this the good stuff on top you're not going to notice that yellowing now another step you could do if you really are worried about the yellowing showing through maybe you're not using a, you don't want to use a whole lot of the good stuff where you're stringing it out over a very large project is you can also mix white glue in with this uh, with this mix and that takes care of the uh, the problem of the yellowing because or not white glue white uh, white paint white paint that's what I meant it's late it's been a very long weekend um, but that is the best ways that I've found online uh, to do snow I've done snow before uh, I've done it with just baking soda and while it turned out presentable um, it was not the best uh, that I have ever done. This is much more presentable in my opinion. I've got some finished pieces that I'll show you over here in a minute. Um, actually, I'll probably just show you all the finished product on this project. Oh, that's a little bit too much. See, that's going to happen sometimes. You want to be careful about how much you're using because you want to make this snow look realistic. You know, huge chunks aren't necessarily going to look realistic depending on where they're at on the, on the model. So there's that. Ah, there we go. Put it back on the. Put it back on there. Okay. So, like I was saying, just put this stuff very generously on there. Um, one thing you can go and do that I do like about working with baking soda is, let's say you have a spot like there. You can see it right there where it um, got up on the wall. It doesn't make sense for snow to be there like that. That's obviously an artistic mistake on my part. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of water, not a lot, and we're just going to kind of push at it a little. And we're going to dilute it down. The reason we're going to do that is to hopefully, well, no, nope, I'll just have to build that up. Uh, that's an area that was already dry. If it's not dry, you can just use the water to sort of paint away areas that you've messed up. But where that one is completely dry already, I'm just going to have to build up a drift to match it to make it look good. So, this stuff's starting to dry on me real bad, so it's not working that well. Let me add a little bit of water to the mix. When you're when you're uh, when you make large batches like this, you can add a little water and spread it around, and it's not going to dilute it terribly, and it'll just help kind of uh, refresh it because it starts to dry out really quickly because the baking soda bonds with the glue, and you just end up having uh, really dry clumps that you can't do anything with. So we'll do that just a little bit to into this corner to make it make more sense. It's actually mixing a little bit with the uh, with the snowflakes that I just put on a second ago. Just smooth that out with your finger a bit. And then let's add the snow. Well hold on. We're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of that wet sculpting to the snow right there. See there's that area where you went up a little too high. And this is why you also want the catcher, so you can just toss it on there and not worry about wasting too much. Now, I've got some on my desk over here where I'm placing the models to dry. Um, it doesn't take a terribly long amount for these to dry either. You're probably looking at about a half hour to an hour, depending on how much water you mixed in. 
Um, if you mix in a lot of water, it's not going to hold. Uh, and it's also going to take a lot longer to dry for you to find out that it's not going to hold. So you want to keep your water, you don't even want to make it a 10%. You just want like a very, very small amount of water in there at all. Because the water is there not really to, to do anything other than help lubricate it a little bit and to delay the drying process between the uh, baking soda and the glue. So there's those. Toss some more snowflakes on that. And there you have it. That is the, uh, oh, we also have to do this roof. This roof didn't turn out well. It looks like it's been brushed on. So we're gonna go in and the key I've found to making good flat surfaces like the roofs here with the snow is to just have at least a couple of variations in the elevation because on flat, yeah, you're gonna have snow uh, being blown around by the wind. This one is just being difficult. Look at this, huge chunk, just not wanting to work with me. That's because it's too dry already. So let's grab a little bit of this water and kind of water it up a bit. There we go, that's better. So we're gonna grab a bunch of this. Eh, it's just getting everywhere. Oh no. Oh yeah, this stuff is gonna be, it's chaotic to work with, just so you know. So We're just gonna put all that up there. Now this is where the uh, the second play of the watered down PVA glue comes into play. So I'm just going through here and spreading it around a little bit to make those elevated points for us to sprinkle the snowflock on. Now the thing is, is the rest of it you really do want to have some other snow that's just sort of surfaced. You know, just, you can sprinkle it. Now, I use the watered down PVA glue once I'm done doing that to kind of fill in these gap areas that I missed the first time. We're just gonna go around here with this stuff. Just kind of spread it around evenly. And I'm not really worrying terribly about hitting the spots that I've already got some on there. I'm really just trying to spread it around. So then, you just take some more of your... Now at this point, I'm going to do something that you really, you know, if you're trying to conserve how much snow that you're, how much snow flock you're using, because, you know, you might be on a budget. This stuff isn't cheap. It's like $13 for one can of this uh, Woodland Scenic stuff, which is the, the really high quality stuff. Uh, and the problem is, is that when you do a large scale terrain project like this, you can't really afford to do that. You know, you can't bulk up your snow for large scale projects like this. You're just, you're gonna spend so much. I know because I built a, uh, at one point I built an eight foot by four foot table uh, that used Woodland Scenics ballast as the gravel, and I spent way more money than I had ever anticipated. It was like my first terrain project that I had ever done for a game store I worked back in Kentucky. Um, so this one is a little bit uh, heavier than the other are, but that's a good thing. You don't want all your buildings to be the same. So. That'll be interesting to see how that one looks once uh, once it all dries. So I'm going to grab you guys and kind of show you over here what's going on with all these other pieces. Okay. Okay. So there's the one we just did. It's uh, got a rather let, let's let's hit it from a lower angle. So I'm actually going to take this camera off the tripod for a moment. Okay. So. As you can see, that is a much more raised area. Right there, you've got a lot more. There we go, that's the angle I was looking for to get the detail. Much more raised areas. Uh, this area, this one here does not have as much raised areas and has some areas that are still pretty open. Same thing over here. Um, you can see I've 
piled up areas where the snow would conceivably drift in or gather if there was a lot of wind going around. He's going to be really fun to, to do details on after the snow is dried. There's going to be like red blood uh, in the snow, so I'm going to tint it afterwards. Uh, you've also got areas where it's pooled up here. Um, the biggest thing is that snow is going to like be blown up against the walls and so on and so forth. These little objective markers. So I still have to do all these. Oh, uh, I'm going to also do a finished um, video on this. But here is the Tesla cannon, uh, completely done. This is uh, my friend Ian's. Uh, he gave me a ton of Necrons, uh, and I built this in exchange for those for his uh, Signar. We're actually going to play a game next weekend as well. We're, we're brainstorming like a special scenario for this piece as well, uh, which is going to be really fun. So, yeah, uh, that is pretty much what's going on now. Uh, oh, here's one that's completely done. So this one has a light dusting on the roof, and then it has these large snow drifts all over the place right here. And then you have uh, some smaller ones. It's not going fully up against it very hard, but I thought that was a good thing because not every building is going to have a heavy amount of snow on it. And these are going to get covered in so much snow. This is, these two alone could eat an entire can of baking soda, I think. But yeah, there is how you, uh, how you do the snow effect. And I will definitely get this video up of this finished project because it's going to be done tonight. So as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more content.